to help you better appreciate the health, all this is being made possible. I want to bring in an old friend, a mentor, a festival director, and co-founder of the Wujin Theater Festival. Stan, welcome. Hi, Julian. It's always great to be on your show. Thank you for having us every year. It's always good to have you back, Stan. I am simply amazed by how the Wujin Theater Festival has, has done this. It's simply unparalleled, even on a global scale. Wow. But <clears throat> Tell us, how has Wujin managed to do this in this post-pandemic world? Well, it, it certainly hasn't been easy uh, because if you think about how we have to pre-plan a festival, which is about a year and a, ahead, which is already pretty late, we, we have to, this year in particular, because of the pandemic, we needed to figure out a date to, a cutoff date to say, okay, sorry, we're not going to have any international shows because they're just thinking a year ahead, will these people be able to get visas? Well, what is the whole situation with vaccination, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we, we made a decision around Chinese New Year. Sorry, no, no international shows. But we did hope that we could get the best of the domestic shows together here in Wuzhen this year. And <clears throat> the specially invited plays, yes. they are a departure from what we've seen before. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. Yes, because uh, it's an all Chinese lineup this year. So um, we've been uh, looking, curating the most interesting works we can find. And with, we, we didn't really mean to do this, but it turned out that women directors are really in the forefront this time. So there's in fact more women directors than, than males this year at the festival. And I think that really tells something about the development of Chinese theater, which we hope this year we, we would be able to showcase. Uh, now it's our eighth, it's our eighth installment from the first installment where there wasn't that much new creative work in theater. Now we had our pick of, of so many things, so many different things to bring to the festival. So I think it's, it's a time for our audience to, with us, sort of take a gauge. How are we doing? How is the creative life of the theater in China? You know, I think this, if you come to the festival this year, you will see an all Chinese program. It's, it's very special. And <clears throat> in terms of being special, what has changed? What is special this year for you? you for, know? For, for me, well, you know, because last year we, we didn't, weren't able to do the festival. Uh, Huang Lei, also one of the founders of the festival, had an incredible idea to do this variety show, which everyone thought before when we were shooting it, no, this isn't going to work, but it turned out to be a big hit on the internet called Theater mm -hmm. for Living. Theater for yeah. Living. Yeah. And um, we brought in many of the winners of, from the uh, Emerging Theatre Artists Competition in Wuzhen and many of our, our friends and they, they did, they together created new works in Wuzhen. So I was still in contact with Wuzhen last year because I was part of that show. Uh, and we did some beautiful, incredible works together, they did. And we've brought them to the festival too. And so they're here, they've already become sort of mini stars because of the, the variety show. And I think that's great because theatre is always you know, theater is not the, your normal popular, popular uh, thing, not like television or film. You know, it's always been more sort of a, you know, elite sort of thing. I'm just curious though, that theater for a living, the mm -hmm. reality TV show, would right. you call that theater too? Would, would I call that theater? Yeah. Yes, so definitely, because they're working in the Woods and theaters, all of the theaters were open to them to choose where they wanted to work. And in fact, it's a challenge to film those and, and then show them for a television audience. So they're definitely basically theater works. Now, whether you call the whole <coughs> show theater or not, that is something else to talk about. Yeah. I want to talk about your play, mm -hmm. Ago, which mm -hmm. is being featured at this year's Wuchen Theater Festival. Mm -hmm. It's also your 40th play. Yes, <coughs> yeah. Now, in trying to break through, you're also revisiting the theme of fate. Mm -hmm. What is the power that fate holds over us or vice versa? <laughs> well, I can't say I'm an authority on that at all, but I, I do have some interesting ways of looking at it in my, this, again, a super long play. It's five and a half hours ago. Mm -hmm. um, in it, I, I guess I let sort of my imagination really run free. Um, at my age, I think I'm, I'm, I'm able to do that. I'm qualified to do that. So. Um, I have a lot of characters who aren't really people per se in the play. Like there are animals, there's a guy who can talk to animals, and then there are concepts who are characters like time and chance. Mm -hmm. And chance is more perhaps, what is fate? Fate is time plus chance, you know, per perhaps. You know, this is something, an equation I'm just thinking of off the top of my head. But these time and chance keep walking around the audience, walking around. You see them. Who are these people? And then at fateful moments, they, they appear. And, and they do also talk to the characters and explain what their roles are, how they work. You know? So that's 
part of uh, part of the play. I'm scratching my head right here. <laughs> and Stan, today is the launch of our new show, The Vibe. Yes. Do you have any words of wishes for the show? Uh, wonderful wishes for you. Thank you for opening it in Wuzhen, and I already feel the good vibes. Thank you very much, Stan. We also hope that uh, you know through these plays, we are not only showing the burgeoning of humanity in China, in the world, but also incubating more momentum for the future.